The Primate Rescue Center began when our director's husband purchased a monkey for her, thinking that it would make the perfect pet. Uh, when they quickly realized that their young gizmo uh, was not uh, the perfect pet that they thought he was going to be, and he definitely quickly outgrew his cute, cuddly stage. Um, and they uh, began to research the um, exotic pet trade um, and began to discover the dark side of the monkey pet business and uh, began to discover all of these monkeys in need in pet situations all across America and they decided to take it upon themselves to begin rescuing these animals and providing appropriate homes for them and monkey by monkey we became the sanctuary that we are today. <coughs> Our mission is to alleviate the suffering of primates across the world, and we do that through education and making sure that we're properly placing animals, and we also collaborate with other sanctuaries to find out the best practices and things that we can do and also share our knowledge with them as well. We currently have almost 50 primates here at the Primate Rescue Center. We have 11 chimpanzees and almost 40 monkeys. They come to us in a variety of situations, ranging from laboratory animals to uh, entertainment animals, but most of them come to us from pet situations. Many of them are brought to us by their owners, um, however some of them are confiscated by fish and wildlife or animal control officers. Some of our animals are just completely abandoned. Uh, Delia was left in a, an apartment closet, um, just left by uh, her owners to be found by the landlord. Some of them are found roaming free <laughs> in the cities. Some of them are severely mistreated, found in very, very tiny cages that are full of waste and dark basements and haven't been fed in quite some time and are very emaciated. So some of these stories can be quite tragic and pull at your heartstrings. <laughs> One of the ones that always gets me is about our chimpanzees. We have four chimpanzees that were um, rescued and there was actually five of them that were living in this horrible, horrible condition in Georgia. It was a bunker this lady had built with no windows, so there was no sunlight. Their enclosure wasn't cleaned, so for about 10 years they were cleaning it up themselves and removing, pushing the waste to one side. They weren't being fed a proper diet and weren't even getting water on, you know, every day. And to see the pictures of what they look like, you know, Debbie didn't even survive once we got in there to try to rescue them. Victoria came and she was 80 pounds. Zulu has rickets. Hazel has diabetes. But they all are thriving so much. But to see those pictures, and as wonderful and kind and sweet as they are and the interactions they have with us, to think that that's where they came from is absolutely heart-wrenching to me. You just wonder how someone could do that. You know, we, we don't accept that when people do that to dogs and cats. So why are we letting people take on primates and, and allowing them to be treated the same way? Typically we get the phone call here and um, I get to find out lots of information. So we ask a lot of questions. You know, what is the species? How old are they? Have they been housed with other monkeys or by themselves? And then we also ask, you know, if they've been altered in any way. So we do have one monkey here who, whose owners found a vet to remove all of his teeth. So there's a lot of questions we ask something that people don't realize when they get a baby monkey, that it does grow up very quickly and they do get aggressive, they can become very unpredictable, and they certainly are wild animals inside of your home. And so I think people very quickly realize the mistake that they made and quickly call us to find the solution to the problem. There are certain species that we can't care for here in Kentucky, and so we want to make sure that we're finding the most appropriate you know, sanctuary for them to, to spend the rest of their lives in, because that's something we do. When we take them in, it's for the entirety of their lives, which can be anywhere between 20 to 50 years that we're making that commitment for, but that's a commitment we make to them. Well, one of our main goals is to provide companionship for the primates that come through our doors. We do not like to see any of our primates housed singly, so we try all sorts of things to uh, make sure they have companions. So if that means they're going to live with someone that doesn't necessarily look exactly like they do, um, then we try it out. So even though they don't look alike, they do have the similar uh, ways of 
talking to each other and behaving with each other. We really focus on trying to provide the highest quality of care for these primates. We offer them a varied diet of fruits and vegetables, so a majority of our day is preparing those meals. We have a lot of volunteers that also help us prepare those meals in the morning. And after spreading those uh, fruits and vegetables in a variety of ways to encourage foraging behavior, which is a natural behavior for primates in the wild, uh, we like to encourage as many wild behaviors as we can for our primates. Um, to provide them the most enriching environment and an environment most like to what they would experience in the wild. Uh, we also clean their enclosures, provide them enrichment that they need to thrive in their environment. Our primates have had traumatic pasts, so we do want to provide them with a sanctuary setting, which means not having strangers enter their lives on a daily basis. Primates are very territorial, so when strangers come into their territory, they want to defend that territory. So they display and they act out, and some of them even become stressed. So in order to prevent that experience for them, we limit the amount of uh, visitors that we have, and we, we are closed to the public. We do this for them because of they have gone through such traumatic experiences in their prior lives to arriving here and they deserve to be cared for. They deserve a sanctuary to live out the rest of their lives in peace and serenity. We're one of the very few sanctuaries across the United States. In this region, we are the only one that can care for monkeys and chimpanzees. When you look around at everyone that's here, where would they be if we didn't exist? And it's such a passionate work for all of us that are here and doing this. It's something that we love. And to come to work every day and get to be surrounded by the beauty that is the Primate Rescue Center, we would love to not be a sanctuary, not have the need for it. We would love for all of these monkeys to have lived their life in the wild with their families, with their mothers. So it's heartbreaking every day to know that we have to provide a sanctuary because every day we come, we know who we work for and it's, it's the monkeys and chimpanzees that call the Primate Rescue Center home. We know without us, their lives would be still in peril and they would still be in those deplorable conditions if we weren't able to rescue them.